I'm going to show you how to transfer your drawing now onto your block. First of all, you have to know that with relief printmaking, say I've inked this up, put a piece of paper here and I've printed it and pulled it over here and here's my print now and here's my block. This image is going to be reversed, the mirror image of this, like a rubber stamp if you've ever stamped a rubber stamp. The reason that's important to know is if you were going to include text of any kind, words of any kind, they have to be backwards on the block in order to read correctly in the finished print. A lot of people just draw directly on the linoleum with their pencil and develop whatever the drawing is going to be. And that works just fine. And you can hold this in front of you and look at it in the mirror and check that things are reversing correctly any text or that the balance is, is correct that way. Really easy to erase pencil marks off linoleum. So it'd be very easy to just draw your drawing, make changes and just come up with your finished image. However, if you're working on speedy carve material, this is much softer material. And if you tried to draw directly on here, which you certainly can do, but if you press too hard or if you try to erase, too hard that can abrade the surface and that will show up in your finished print basically for any print that i do i'm working with an image that's on tracing paper so i may have an image that's in my sketchbook that i'm working from this is a photocopy from a sketch of some barbed wire that I want to use for this. But the first thing I do after I figure out what I'm going to do is that I get it transferred onto tracing paper. And of course, tracing paper is translucent, so you can look at it from both sides. Notice also that when I transferred this, just set it on top of one of these, I used a Sharpie, an ultra fine Sharpie, and this gave me a little bit thicker lines and that helps translate to the size that the lino needs to be. Often your pencil drawing, the marks that you're making here and how close together things might be or little spaces in between things will be really way too small for carving on linoleum, both because of the size of your tools and also if you get too small with lino, it'll crumble. So I took an ultra fine Sharpie which is this, this size of Sharpie, and transferred my original drawing onto a piece of tracing paper. Now I can look at this and I could look at it from both sides and I could decide that even though my original drawing was in this orientation, in which case the block would need to be this orientation, I might actually decide that I want the finished print to look like this which means the block needs to look like this. So once I get my drawing on tracing paper, here's another example, I pretty much always write print on the side that'll be the print, and then I write block on the side that will be what the block orientation would be. I use this as a shorthand to myself, knowing that I have looked at this image in both orientations and I've decided that yes, I do want the finished image to look like this. So to transfer your drawing onto a block, there's different ways that you can do this. With speedy carve material, and I'll just show you on this sample piece here, or here we go. What I will often do is, um, let me back up a little bit here. If I have, I know my block size and in printmaking, you pretty much start by knowing your paper and your block size, not necessarily knowing your image size. And then you usually make your image size fit the block or the paper size, not the other way around. So what I often do is I'll just set my block down on a piece of tracing paper, transfer, sorry, trace around it, knowing that this shape is going to be a little bit larger than this. And then I might draw my image, whatever it might be, within that space, realizing that when I transfer it, I might lose some of the space around the outside. This is just so much faster than measuring this and then measuring precisely to get my rectangle on, on the piece of tracing paper. So for this image, this size has my pen side has my pencil marks on it. This side does not have my pencil marks. So to transfer 
the image, I just put the graphite down on the block like this. That's assuming I want this to be my final print orientation. So once again, I'm going to write print and write block. So we're going to transfer the graphite. If I wanted it the other way around, I would need to draw on this back with my pencil again. So I'd have the graphite on this side, but I, I'm not doing that. Okay, and then I'm just going to line this up. You can see that my rectangle is a little bigger than my block. So I'm just going to make sure it fits how I like it on here. You could cut and sort of uh, tape it down, but that's not really necessary. I'm just gonna place it where I want it to be. And I just use my thumbnail, but you could use a burnisher. You could use all sorts of things. You just want to apply some pressure and you can see that the graphite really easily transfers onto the speedy carve material. This is true for any of the soft cut sort of blocks. They just grab onto that graphite. And you can see, so you can see that it transferred it and that it's the opposite of the drawing. Some parts I didn't get completely, so I'll just go ahead and draw them in on here. And then if there's areas where I need to adjust a little bit um, because they're too close to the edge, I might just sort of move the drawing and make some changes directly on the block. One of the main times that I don't transfer the image is if I have some sort of image um, where I have, say, a geometric pattern in the background, I would probably mark that and draw that directly on the block. So I have the graphite onto this block. The graphite holds up really well on the speedy carve. Like you can see that I'm rubbing it and it's not coming off. Another really great thing about the speedy carve blocks. So I don't need to go over this with a pen or anything. Um, I don't have to worry about it wearing away in the course of my carving. So that would be it for a speedy carve block. So for a linoleum block or some other um, linoleum sort of material, I would transfer the image in a different way. Or say I don't have an image in pencil. I could, of course, go over this with graphite. But maybe I want to use some sort of transfer paper. Transfer paper is like carbon paper, and they come in different kinds. This is a red carbon paper that's available from McLean's. There's also transfer paper, which looks something like this. Just looks, it's carbon paper, basically. These sheets you can use over and over and over again for training. You can see all the white on here is from different drawings that I've transferred. How I would do this is, let's see, I'm trying to do too many things at one time here. So I could take my drawing on tracing paper, regardless of the drawing material. I could put it in the orientation that would be correct on here. I could tape it down. And then I could just lift this up, slide the transfer paper. And with this transfer paper, it's one-sided, so I have to be sure that the carbon stuff is down toward the block. And then on linoleum, I just use a ballpoint pen because I'm not gonna dent the lino. It's pretty tough. If I was transferring to a woodcut, I would also use a ballpoint pen, but I would be much more careful about how much pressure I'm using because I don't wanna dent the wood. But linoleum, don't have to worry about that. And then I would just go over my drawing and you can see that it transferred this black carbon paper. The red carbon paper works exactly the same way, except that there's red stuff on both sides. The nice thing about that is that when you draw on this to transfer it, let me just draw a couple things here. It transfers the mark onto the block, of course, but it also transfers the red up back up onto your drawing. Nice thing about that is if you have a really complicated drawing that you're transferring, you can use that as a way to check that you've transferred everything, you know, looking at this as well as looking at that. 
So on this block, you can see that I've, I've started carving it and I've transferred the image using the red carbon paper. The red carbon paper is really great because just like the graphite on the speedy carve block, it is very durable on your block and you don't need to go over it, say with a Sharpie, um, before you start carving, it's gonna hold up. Another thing you can do to transfer your image is basically make your own transfer paper. So this is a piece of tracing paper and I'm using Conti, but you really could use kind of everything, anything. You could use charcoal, you could use, um, you know, regular playground chalk in a, in a color. And I'm just going to put Conti over this fairly heavily. Don't have to be very precise. It's sort of messy. In the studio, we tape these up in a corner so that no one has to put these in their drawer with their good paper or anything. I would just do the same thing that I did like this, but I would put Conti down on the block and then transfer my image using it the same exact way. You can put the chalk or the Conti on the back of the piece of tracing paper that has your drawing on it, but I like to keep my drawing clean. So I prefer having a, a separate piece of transfer paper rather than putting it on the back of the drawing. But of course you can do that. And you can see that transfers and shows up really easily too. The difference here between the transfer paper and the Conti is the Conti is not going to hold up as well uh, during the time that it takes you to carve your block. So if you're going to use Conti or some sort of chalk, I would definitely go over the marks with a Sharpie. There's also the good old fashioned way to transfer a drawing. And that is, if we go back to this example, here I have the drawing where I've already transferred it onto here. So I don't have a lot of graphite back on here. And say I wanna transfer it in a different orientation to this. I'm gonna go on the back of the tracing paper and again, I could put graphite all over the whole back, but I don't know, I just find that being aesthetically annoying. And so I just would go over your drawing so the graphite is on the other side. And I think of this as just the old school way. This is how I first learned to do this. And then you just draw again on the other side. And of course, the pencil that's on that back side is going to transfer onto the lino. So you don't need transfer paper. It doesn't transfer as cleanly as using the transfer paper, but I have enough because my pencil might not be lining up exactly in the same place, but I have more than enough information there that I can get my image to transfer. So you don't have to buy special transfer paper necessarily. However, Tracing paper is the one of the most important things in printmaking as a way to transfer your image from a drawing or a sketch onto your block. Another thing that's important about transferring your drawing is that it minimizes mistakes that you might be doing. I mentioned this previously that by flipping it over and looking at your drawing in two different orientations, you have a chance to look at the balance of the drawing and a chance to make changes with no commitment of material, right? You just have little pieces of tracing paper, maybe very easy to erase and make mistakes and correct them and do whatever you want. And so that when you get it on the block, then you're all ready to carve and you know the composition is, is what you want. Another thing about transferring drawings and something that I always talk about is that when I transfer my drawings to a, a carved block, even if it's a quite a large um, intricate sort of block, I'm basically transferring a line drawing. And the thing with relief though, is that once you get the line drawing onto the block, you now need to translate it into a relief print. And that's different from a line drawing. Here's an example of a drawing I did in my sketchbook. There's a lot of marks here with the pencil that are way too small for the material, for linoleum. So it needed to be translated into bigger marks. 
So put my tracing paper over this and in the course of tracing this, I broadened the marks. I also made lines more into shapes with tapering and swelling lines. And then I went through this drawing and went in and started coloring in sections. Because a relief print is basically shape. It's not line necessarily. Yes, you're gonna have lines, but you want black lines and white lines. You want black shapes and white shapes, and you want good balance over the block. So it can be really good to go in and color in your drawing like you would be carving your block. This can really help you visualize what's gonna happen. So in this case, for this example print, I colored it in right on my tracing. I often tell my students, just make photocopies of your simplified drawing and then just color them in in different ways so you can visualize how carving it differently might look differently. So in this one, I colored it in on here and then I transferred it to the block as it is. So I transferred the areas filled in. Then it was really easy because all I had to do is carve away the whites of the drawing. And this is what my finished print looks like. So very different from this very sketchy with a lot of little teeny little pencil marks in places. This is more of those sort of broad kind of marks that are made in a relief print. This is a pretty uh, crazy busy block. Um, I'm probably gonna carve it again and uh, allow for more white space. There's very little focal points or place to rest your eye on here, but I do have lots of variation in terms of there's white shapes on black backgrounds as well as black shapes on white backgrounds. And there's areas that transition between having white shapes on black tran you know, backgrounds that transition into adjacent areas that have black shapes on white backgrounds. And that what is what gets really, really fun with relief printmaking. How do I transfer the drawing and make it a relief print? So this is unusual for me though. I usually just keep the transferred image like you can see here as being outlines. And I do this sort of translation of the image when I carve. But if you're a beginning printmaker and you've never done this before, it can really, really help by drawing in either your drawing or your tracing and using that as a guide to help you figure out how you're gonna carve it.